React Native Developers. I hope you are well. William here recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland when talking about React Native adoption in the mobile app industry. Support for the legendary Nokia 3310 was always the elephant in the room. Every time I am publishing a Can It Be Nine React Native video, you are asking me, can I run this on my 3310? And I am so excited that support for React Native on the 3310 is finally available. To celebrate this groundbreaking milestone, we're going to build some simple shapes in React Native onto the Nokia phone, as well as implementing the Snake game. Now, if we cannot afford to cross the bridge on iOS and Android, we certainly cannot afford to do it on the 3310. And support for animations on the 3310 relies on a new technique named Worklet Shaders. Let's have a look. We are into VS Code here and I've fired up my Nokia 3310 emulator and each pixel is rendered using a pixel component which receives an X and Y coordinate as properties, so the coordinate of the pixel and we use an animated style to tell if the pixel should be on or off. And the way we're going to build shapes and animate is the same way we would do it in an OpenGL shader. Based on the X and Y coordinate, we're going to calculate if the pixel should be on or off. And let's try a very simple shape, a circle. So we're going to write our first uh, worklet shader. So it's a worklet function. We pass X and Y as parameters. So we have circle X, Y, and we need to return if the, pic the pixel is on, if the distance of the X and Y is less or equal than the radius from the center of the circle. And here for the center of the circle, we are going to take the center of the screen. So let's do a radius. Um, I have no idea. Let's put five. We're going to try some random values. <clears throat> and so we return distance between X, Y. So very similar, exactly like we would do it on an OpenGL shader from the center is less than radius. And distance we can import and you can the formula for the, let me see if I can import it from the math and this formula you can get to using the Pythagore theorem. It's the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the two other sides. And here it's pretty nice because ESLint is complaining that I forgot the worklet directive because we are running this on the UI thread. So that looks good. The rasterization is not uh, great. Maybe let me make it bigger. Yeah, that's fun. So for sure here, the way we do the rasterization is, I mean, we don't do anything specific, so that's why it looks uh, maybe not so smooth, but the surface area for a pixel is very big. So here I'm making a small one. Uh, let's take two. We are going to try to draw the React logo. And so around this, point we can draw an ellipse and we can do it using the exact same technique so that would be ellipse x y and i can copy paste this one and the formula of an ellipse we get from wikipedia so a and b are the radiuses, so x radius and y radius of the ellipse. And so x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals one. Let's just write it down. So we need a, and here I'm gonna take, let's see, I probably have to change, but here I would like to take with divided by two. And b, we want to make it narrow. So I'm gonna take, I th think here maybe a height divided by two and here with divided by four. Let's see. I'm just putting some almost random values and we'll see what kind of result we get. And so now let's apply the formula x squared divided by a square plus y square divided by b square equals one. 
And so nothing appears. And nothing appears because the surface area of each pixel is so big that this equal equals one never happens. So we need to, because it's within the surface of the pixel. So here, what we can do is instead of doing equals one is approxy, approximates one. And the precision, maybe we can take zero or one. Let me import approximates. So that looks good. And now we need to center it. So let's do X1 and Y1, where we are simply going to remove, subtract the center from X. So X1 is equals X minus center dot X. And same for Y. Y1 is Y minus center dot y so now it's nicely centered and i think i want to invert these parameters here so now we have our first ellipse and now we need two more ellipses which are rotated so let's do the rotated ellipse so it's an ellipse but of course, instead of passing X and Y, we're going to pass the rotated X and Y value. So again, very similar to the way we would do it in an OpenGL shader. So I'm going to call it ellipse1.x, ellipse2.x. So we can rotate using a matrix multiplication. Here, it's such a simple transform. But actually, if we go back to Wikipedia, from the matrix rotation, we can get to the formula directly, which is this one here. And I wrote it down here. And here I'm using a round because I need for X and Y values, integer values. And these are done in the Cartesian coordinate system, which is different from the one of the React Native Canva. The uh, Y axis is inverted and here we want to use the center of the screen as the center of our uh, Cartesian coordinate system. So um, let's convert X, Y to Cartesian. So E1 equals, so we, do, we go from Canva to Cartesian, Canva to Cartesian. So on X, Y, and we pass the center of the screen as the center of the Cartesian coordinate system. Then we rotate the points, so using the function we just looked at so from 260 degrees maybe so pi divided by 3 so it's 180 divided by 3 and let me see if i can just import it here and once we rotated the point to display it we need to go back to the canva coordinate system so we do um, cartesian to canva And we need to pass also the center as parameter. That looks actually pretty strange. And I think here it's because it's, you might have seen it already. It's E1.y. And that looks good. And here you see if we want to change the stroke of the ellipse so you can tell the rasterization is really not sophisticated but we can change the value of approximate so maybe if i put a bigger value zero four it should be a much thicker ellipse it's very thick we can make it much thinner yeah it's a bit too thin actually zero one was a good guess but it's fun using some simple math we can really have a lot of fun and so here we can do the same, E2, but minus 60 degrees. And this is again, very similar. I think I'm not the, of the way we would do it in OpenGL. I think that's how we would do it in OpenGL. And so this is supposed to look like the uh, React logo. Maybe, can I change this parameter, make it a bit more narrower? 
Is that closer? It looks, I guess, a bit better. The rasterization is very primitive. Something like this. Isn't that cool? I mean, it's kind of really fun that we... So, shader style things using animation worklets. Now, let's get into animations by implementing the snake game. Here, I have designed the state of the game. So we have the tail, it's an array of vectors. So for each position of the tail, we get the X and Y value. We have the position of the food and we have the direction. For the direction, you could use a nanum, up, down, left, right. But I thought it would be fun to directly use the vectors we're gonna add in order to build up the position. So if it's up, we add minus one on the Y axis or one if it's down on the Y axis and same for left and right on the X axis. So we're gonna create an animation value which contains this state and update the state accordingly to uh, play the game. But to display at T the game, I think that's all the data we, we need. And so let's create a hook called use snake. And we're gonna create an animated shared value. So I'm gonna call it state use shared value. And I'm gonna pass the default state. And here we can return it. So return state. The tail, let's create some random vectors. I think we can start from the top left corner x zero y zero and maybe i can increment and i'm not sure what should be the default size three four so one two three on the x axis the food is a random vector and i have a function for that which is called random vector and we need the max max x, x and max y so I'm, we're gonna get with of the width and height of the canvas parameters and here i can pass width and height and the direction is let's say right default direction so now quickly at random vector so here we have the max value so we generate for x and y you that goes from zero to the max value and we run because we need integer values and then i have two functions for one to check if two vectors are equals and to check if one vector is contained into an array of vectors so for instance we want to see if the tail contains the food so it means the food has been eaten so these are uh, the three utility functions i'm gonna need so let's instantiate the snake game. So I'm gonna do snake equals use snake. And we pass weave and height as parameter. And so we can pass the state of the game into each pixel. So the snake is an animated shared value with the state of the game. And we receive it as P. So now let me import this one. Now the pixel is on if we are at x, y is the position of the food or the position of the tail. So if, so x, y equals that snake dot value dot food or we can do contains the tail contains x, y. So snake dot value dot tail contains x, y. Let's import these two guys. So that looks good. Now let's animate. And here we can do a use 
oops, use effect. And we're gonna do a set interval. So maybe every 300 milliseconds. And we're gonna add, update the tail so it moves in two directions. So let me access the tail from state.value. And we want the head of the tail and the tail of the tail. So I want head and tail, the rename, remaining, because we're gonna remove this element. So now I can do state.value equals, so we clone the object. And please note that here I'm using SDK Expo 30, 40, which is using RC0 from Reanimated 2. So I can only do such uh, expression on the um, UI on the JavaScript thread, but probably maybe in the final version, it's possible to do it, to do object assign. Um, so state.value and I'm gonna do, so tail, it's the tail of the tail plus a new element and we're gonna add a direction. So here I'm gonna need the last element of the tail. So last is tail at tail.length minus one. So we can do last x plus direction.x. So direction I need to extract here as well. Direction. So direction.x and same for y. y is last.y plus direction.y. That looks good, and I can go down, left, up, right, down. So really fun. Now let's implement if the food has been eaten or not. So we're gonna check food eaten if the tail so actually I should get, oh, it's a new tail, maybe this one. So I'm gonna call it new tail. So new tail. So the food is eaten if the new tail contains the food. So I need also to extract food. So new tail contains food. And now if the food has been eaten, we need to change the position of the food. So we need to give a new food. So it's gonna be a new random vector with, with height or we just return the food. It doesn't move. And if the food has been eaten, the tail needs to grow. And I think, so here, if the food hasn't been eaten, new tail is correct. And if it has been eaten, I think I want to build this one, but here I want to add back head. So not remove one element. So it grows by one. So here I want to do head, tail, and think something like this. Let's have a look. So let me try to catch the food. Up. So new food appears, the tail does grow bigger. This is pretty fun. I'm getting pretty distracted right now, but isn't that cool? So here, the speed, I guess, of the snake should increase, right? As the tail grows longer, and we should implement the boundaries of the Canva, but what a trip down the memory lane. This is pretty fun. Up. Guys, I hope that you are as excited as I am about this game changing milestone. Nothing will be the same anymore. And it was really fun to use the concept of worklet shaders to implement simple shapes and also the 
Snake game, but I am looking forward to build a much more complex user interactions on the 3310. Maybe, for instance, the liquid swipe and using the uh, dial pad as a gesture would be really fun, and maybe things like uh, shared transitions and so on. So, I cannot wait for us to dig further into the Nokia 3310 support. So, I am looking forward to talk to you soon, and until next time, happy hacking.